Hello and welcome to another video tutorial Monday. This week I wanted to play around with my punch around the page punches from Martha Stewart and use this silhouette stamp set from Hero Arts. It's called uh, Three Silhouettes and make a really pretty kind of girly happy birthday card. So I'm going to start out first by doing my main piece that my silhouettes will be stamped on. And I'm using my punch around the page punches. I have these, these are from HSN, I believe, or QVC, probably HSN. Um, but really any punch around the page punch will work for this. I just wanted to show you how I like to use them. And it'll create kind of like a doily look, but with a little bit of an edge. And every punch around the page that's this smaller dimension, so you know, it cuts in about a half inch into the paper, is you can use the same dimensions for your card base and they need to be specific so that it lines up perfectly. You can mix and match these. You can either make them squares or do one on one side and a longer dimension on this side. So I've cut out a piece of 3.25 by 5 inch cardstock, but you could do 3.25 by 3.25, 5 by 5, 12 by 5, if you get what I'm saying here. So. I'm going to do that and it'll fit on the card just perfectly and I'll be able to mat it and put it on there. And so first you start out doing this by opening up your punch so that you can get the corners just right and put your paper in your punch. Make sure you line it up with the guides because there's a tendency to not line it up all the way and then punch through and do this to all four corners. Next, you can go ahead and start punching your sides. So to do this, you just line up the stars. You can see the guides, these are the corner guides and these are the continuation guides. So you could use this like any other border punch, but you can also use it in conjunction with these corners. So you can slide it in here, line up the guides on both sides, and then once you have them set up, you can just punch down and then you have a perfect side. And then for the other sides where you need to punch it more than once, you just line it up on one side here and then punch down. And then you can line it up on this side with the corner here and just to double check, you can line it up with the punch here as well. I've punched around the entire edge of my piece and as you can see it went super quick it took me all of 30 seconds to do as long as you start out with the correct measurements it'll work fantastically every time it's really easy to line up and even if you didn't have the instructions written out in front of you you can do it just by kind of figuring out okay well I have the corners punched now how do I line this up oh okay that fits together so just go through the mental process of trying to figure it out and then you'll have it every time so, now that I have this cute little starburst border, I can go ahead and start stamping my silhouettes on. I'm going to be using this ink from Jenny Bolin Studios, the Chewing Gum Ink. This studio, or this stamp set from Hero Arts. And then I'm going to use my stamp -a jig which I went through, and since these are woodblock stamps, they're always mounted on the same place on the block, so this will work even if I picked this up you know, a year from now, this stamp would still work with this stamp a jig stamp because you stamp it the same way every time. So I went ahead and pre-stamped this with some stays on ink, that way it's not going to rub off on my project. And I'll use it to line things up. I'm going to start out with the one with the bun in the middle because I feel like she is the most um, compact one, so I'll be able to kind of center her the best. And I'm going to go right about here. And I tested this out on a piece of scrap paper first, just to make sure that they would fit. It's kind of a tight fit, but it'll be fine for this occasion. Just make sure you test it out before you go on your good cardstock, otherwise you might end up wasting a good piece of cardstock. So I'm just going to line it up and stamp it down really well. And then I'm going to put the girl with the flippy hair on this side. 
So kind of centering it in between the girl that's already stamped and then the edge here. And then use my Stampin' Majig to line it up. And ink up my stamp really well. And stamp down. And then lastly, you can just do this with the third girl. Next, I can start assembling my card. I'm going to adhere this onto a piece of cardstock with some dimensional adhesive. And this will just give it some lift and separate it from the pink cardstock. This is Sweet Blush from Paper Tray Ink, by the way. And it's a pretty close color to the color of ink that I chose, and I just want to keep it kind of monochromatic like that without it getting too crazy by adding in some bright pinks. I want this to be a really classy card. And now I'm going to adhere it to my card base, which is made out of craft cardstock, with my ATG. And I've definitely left some excess on the edges here so that I can have a little bit extra room to play with and make sure it's really centered so I'll end up cutting off a little bit of extra. And I'm going to put it more towards the top than trying to center it because I want my sentiment to go somewhere down here and I want it to be balanced so having that sentiment on the bottom means I need a little bit more breathing room at the bottom. So I've cut out down this piece of paper to just shy of 5 eighths of an inch wide and then it's just an long amount. It's definitely longer than the card, so I'll definitely have enough to work with. And I'm going to line, I'm going to make my own sentiment using Sophie Sentiments from Lawn Font. It's one of my favorite stamp sets. And I'm going to do Let's Celebrate Birthday Girl. And this way, I've cut apart the happy and the birthday already. So I'm just going to take there, that there. We have girl from the It's a Girl and Boy. And then I can just line them up on my grid mat here. And then pick them up with my block. And before I stamp them down on my piece of cardstock, I want to test it on my piece of scrap cardstock here. So I'm going to stamp it down. And it looks like I can definitely bring up birthday and girl a little bit. And the reason why I'm leaving kind of a space here is I want to put a comma but before birthday girl. So, because that's proper grammar and it drives me nuts when I don't put in commas and things like that. So I'm going to ink it up and then test stamp it again. And it looks like I can just bring in the girl a little bit and then we'll be good to go. So I'm inking my stamp up here and I'm just going to get right over my project and then when it looks about centered, commit and stamp down. That's looking very good. I can go in with this blue marker that I have and just do a little quick comma. And I think I'm going to add an exclamation point as well. Lawn Fawn has one in their stamp set, but mine seems to have disappeared. <laughs> so it's probably somewhere around my craft area. Not a big deal. And now I have my sentiment here. And I think this will go right about here. And I want to round the corners with my quarter inch side of my corner chomper. And then I think this could use a little bit something extra at the end of this sentiment. So I'm going to wrap around a piece of ribbon and have the little bow go over here, but I'm going to tie a little bow. And this is Cream Silk Ribbon from May Arts. And now that I have my ribbon exactly where I want it, I'm just going to take a glue dot and roll it and stick it underneath the bow. And this will help keep it in place because this silk ribbon is very slippery. So you want to make sure to adhere it down in at least one place. 
and I might even add some more adhesive to the back if I wasn't going to be adhering something over it anyways. So I'm going to get my sentiment ready to adhere down and I'm going to use some more of this dimensional adhesive. This dimensional adhesive is by Sticky Thumb, by the way, and you can get it from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just loving this. It's relatively new to me and I think it's just great. And now for finishing touches, I want to add some pearls. So I'm going to cut these pearls apart from, these are from Hero Arts, and they're the, this perfect really tiny size. So I'm going to cut them apart and put three on each girl's hair where, uh, where pearls or a barrette would usually go. So right here, right here, and then right here where her headband would be. Alright, so I've added my pearls onto the card, and I actually ended up using both of the sizes of Hero Hughes pearls, um, both the small and medium, and I added the small pearls on where the, their barrettes would be on their hair, a large one and two small ones over here, and then a larger one on the bow. And I think the only thing I still want to do on this card is to add a line of stitching going across the top here with my Signo White Uniball pen. And even though this isn't cream like the rest of the card, it'll still add that nice highlight that we need. So I've added the stitching across the top here, and then even a couple stitches over here at the bottom where you could still see the edge of the pink. And I think that finishes it off really well. And so I really enjoyed using these woodblock stamps with Punch Around the Page from Martha Stewart. And I think this would be a really cool technique to try with any, um, set of images that you wanted to have lined up like this. So you could do like little cars or maybe even little dinosaurs. That'd be super cute with pretty much any kind of border punch that you have. So here's the picture of the finished card this week. And here's the close up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again next week on another video tutorial Monday.